constantly walking around. Yeah, I love the tux. You like the tux? I, I love that idea. I mean, I I love a tux. Um, I love old schoolness, you know, and bringing back that Rat Packy kind of Vegas thing is certainly something with if it could happen, the accompanying mindset in a lot of ways, which is, you know, ring a ding ding. Mm -hmm. Let's live. You yeah. know? I mean, obviously, see the younger generation, you can't say that because, oh yes, Frank Sinatra, but he also was bad with women. Everybody's bad with something you know, first of all, people evolve. Mm -hmm. Humans evolve. You know, you, you can't expect, they think you can look back at the past and judge it by the mores of the present, which even their own generation will not stand up to in 50 years. Mm -hmm. We're doing things now that they'll hate. Yeah. So, you know, the younger generation probably doesn't want to go back to the Rat pack eat times, and yeah, it wasn't good in some ways, but there was a general feeling to it. I, I, I think Vegas was better when the mob ran it. I do too. And I just feel like, I don't know, d does that come back around? Do we see a Vegas in 10, 20 years where people are dressed in, you know, suits, cocktail dresses? I mean, Steve Wynn tried to implement that in, at the Wynn Hotel when he first opened it. No kids, no strollers. Guys had to wear a jacket and women had to have cocktail dresses. And that lasted 48 hours. And, and uh, you right. know, they were walking through the to the casino with a thong on. So uh, it's like, yeah. I don't know, I, I, I feel like, yeah, there, there was yeah. some, there was some, those times were whatever. Everybody, everybody in every generation was doing something that was probably not looked upon as good, but I'm just saying, how could you deny putting on a nice jacket, looking the part when you go out? Now you go anywhere, and it seems like it's just, it's just. Well, you, I mean, that's interesting that you mentioned that. I did not realize that Steve Wynn did that. Mm. Do you know what year that was? Uh, that was like 20 he, years ago. Yeah, something? he opened the hotel around 15, 20 years ago. I want to say 2004, 2005. Something like that. Yeah. The Wynn. The yeah. Wynn and the Encore. The Wynn and the Encore. Yeah. Right. So, and there were signs all over the casino saying that this is what happened. Well, he's also the guy who, when he had the, didn't he have the Bellagio? Yeah. For, okay had the exhibit of like art, art's greatest hits. Mm -hmm. They had, uh, they had a, a museum. Yeah. Like and an it was gallery. just the ones that, you know, and it wasn't the Mona Lisa because you couldn't get that on loan. But they had Van Gogh's like, you know, uh, Starry Starry Night in there. Yeah. I mean, they had some major artworks. Mm -hmm. And that was his way of saying, yes, let's, as you were saying, let's raise the bar. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little class here. Um, I mean, I thought that was brilliant. And of course, as much as that cost, the thing out front was genius because it cost like 10 cents and everybody loved that even more, which was the tape of Pavarotti. They played, and then the, uh -huh. the fountains with lights. So what do you need? Water, lights, and a disc. Yeah. And it blew everybody's minds. And they were like, fuck Van Gogh. <laughs> Look at this. He made water shoot in the air. Yeah. He's the man is a genius. So I think that's your answer about like, um, you know, trying to get the masses to um, put on a, a nice coat and tie. I don't think that's ever going to no, happen again. I not, not I, in I, our, I have hopes that that might come around, but who knows? I don't know where this is going. Not, not on a mass level. That's the thing. I mean, you could do it for a select group, yes. But they don't want that in a casino. They want throngs of people losing money. You want the biggest, you know, they, what they call it, the drop at the table. I think you probably know from working Vegas. They don't really care about you as a performer, certainly not what you're doing, as long as it brings in people. But even that is not what they care about. They care about what the people who you bring in do mm -hmm. when your show ends. Yeah. And what do you think that is? Well, I mean, listen, they're looking- Gamble. Yeah, they're looking gamble for the <laughs> well, food, the nightclubs, the rooms. Not the nightclubs, not the food, not a gamble. That's what their business is. That's, you're selling nothing. There is no product and people are giving you your, their money. That's a good business to be in. Mm -hmm. they're, you're just selling air and hope. Food, you have to actually provide food. <laughs> you know, that's have to pay you to tell jokes. But the gambling, 
it's everything. Everything is there to funnel them to lose their house and mortgage and their child's future at the tables. And that's all you're there for. So. I agree. I agree. But you yourself, did you play Vegas when there was hints of the mob still there? I... When I was 26, I opened for Diana Ross at Caesar's Palace. Talk about thrilled to get a job. But it was what I call the dead ball era in Vegas. It was after the Rat Pack days, mm -hmm. but before Vegas had reinvented itself as a place where young people would be interested in going. I mean, I was there for two weeks, 26 years old. I, I don't remember seeing any pretty girls. No, so it was just older. It was it was almost like what I guess Miami was like at a certain point. You know that kind of um, the acts were fairly octogenarian. I mean they were, let's just say they were veteran performers. I don't think ever everyone was in their eighties, but you know it was like Pat Cooper. I remember I, I went and saw as many of the comedians, Buddy Hackett. Mm. You know. Um, and Diana Ross was like the, the, that was the, Caesars at that moment was the biggest casino by far. That was the shit. Mm -hmm. And she was the biggest star. I think the number I think she was getting a week was $400,000. That's pretty big in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you had no hints of like, uh, Mr. Marr, right this way. You no, know, well, certainly no, <laughs> you know, certainly like at that era, no one was saying to me, Mr. Marr, anything <laughs> or right this way. I was the sacrificial lamb that went on stage while people filed in to see the great yeah. Diana Ross. Yeah, yeah. And she was great and is great. I loved her. Um, still do. Um, but uh, no, there was, there was none of that. And I don't, I mean, I would not have been privy to that but I think it was phasing out anyway. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the heyday was the 50s and 60s. I mean, that's, of course, the, the, the plot of uh, Godfather 2 that we were just talking about is, you know, part of it is Bugsy Siegel opening Vegas. I mean, yeah. him, Hy Hyman Roth has that great speech uh -huh. where he talks about how Mo Green got shot in the eye and there's not a plaque or a signpost. This was a man of guts and vision. He invented the city of Las Vegas and we don't honor him. You know, that era, I think, had pretty much passed by the time I got there. The problem was they, they were fumfering around a while before they realized that they were sitting on the gold mine of, this is the one place in America where you can be an adult, you can be politically incorrect, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. So when they kind of went, to, they tried to be like family friendly and it's like, that's not what you're, that's not who you are and you shouldn't want to be that. You have, you have this almost all to yourself. People act in Vegas in ways they don't, the rest of the, country when they're home yeah. and that is an awesome thing to be selling they should actually be doing better than they are uh, well i don't know they're, they from what i'm seeing it's constantly packed uh, especially after the hey thanks for watching the clip hit the subscribe button now so you never miss out on our club random content that's posted daily